So word has it that the newest acolyte of the Quintessons is a character named Slitherfang that was designed by the former now Transformers lead designer, John Warden himself. How good of a job did he really do? Well, we're about to find out in the latest Got By True review. One, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, baby, light them up. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton and lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors NL, and The Autobot Family, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe vs. DC Universe vs. Marvel, and find me everywhere across social media. All those links are in the description. If you want to help the channel, you can use the donate link, you can check us out on Patreon, you can always hit the join button and become a channel member, and you can see what we offer to you through Teespring, and this is Slitherfang, who I was excited to get. Totally different, had no idea originally that this was going to be part of the Quintesson forces, but I'm happy to add him. In fact, I'm going to kind of show him off with a Quintesson, and probably a couple of Sharktacons, just to see kind of how he fits in with his brethren. No, unfortunately, it's not one of the Earthrise Quintessons. It's a third-party one. You'll see when we get there. Um, I heard that this was developed by uh, and designed by John Warden himself. I don't know if it if it's good yet or not. I, we're about to find out. I mean, it's a snake. It's something totally different. Not something that would be the easiest to work with. It's a snake that has to become a plank. We're going to see how well this turned out when we head over to the table and take closer look at this guy. And yes indeed, here we have the slithering sliminess that is known as Slitherfang. And I think everybody thought that this guy was going to be a member of the Decepticons, but no! He's actually part of the Quintesson forces. Let's look at the packaging first. And here we have the packaging. It looks pretty cool up here. I like this. It's kind of a... Like, it's kind of also a throwback to like G.I. Joe. Like, I could see Cobra using this Cobra. I could see Cobra teaming up with the Quintessons and using this Cobra. That'd be cool. How do I know that it's a Quintesson member? Well, first clue is right here. This little symbol is usually Autobot or Decepticon. This is a Quintesson symbol, which tells you that he's part of those forces. Uh, on the back, we have, you know, the product images and stuff. It's typical. It is what it is. We got a little sheet of instructions. They're fine. He also turns into a plank, just like, you know, um, sound barrier. You know, he makes a fine floorboard, I guess, or road. We have this beautiful blast effect, and I like it because it's more like something is being hit than something is being shot, and we don't have a lot of these that kind of show when something is being hit, so I absolutely dig having this. And here we have Slitherfang displayed with, well, my current crop of Quintesson forces. I have one of the uh, SRC Legend Heroes uh, 01 Q's Judge here. It's it's a third party Quintesson. I looked at that in episode 552. They're pretty fantastic, kind of cheap for what they are, uh, but I, I really like having a trio of them. Yes, I do plan to augment them with the Earthrise Quintessons. Um, we'll see how that works out. I'm okay with them being different sizes because in the comic books they were different sizes. Eh, I don't usually reference the comic books, but I will in this case because it doesn't hurt to have stronger Quintesson forces. We have a couple of the Titans Return Sharktacons, my custom Titans Return Sharktacons. And I looked at these a long time ago in episode 265. And more recently, I actually added a second trio of... Uh, Shark Decons, because I do have three of the Titans Return ones. I added a trio of the Cyberverse ones, who are a little bit bigger, not quite as articulated, but a little bit bigger. I looked at those in episode 594. And honestly, I think the slimy Slither Fang fits right in. Now, very, very recently, I actually looked at a custom paint job i done on this guy to become uh, Cobra Breast to go with my custom Death Cobra. I'm not going to show that comparison here. If you want to see what I did with the paint apps and see kind of how he interacts with Death Cobra, well, you can go back and check that out. I want to reiterate that I was very fortunate to be able to add that piece of content to the Bots at Home fan-run convention. It was wonderful to be a part of it. And 
I said then that I would save things like the transformation and the articulation for now. So, very first thing, we have a purpley look, a lot of translucent here, but I think it kind of matches, and where we don't have translucent, we kind of have a very dark gunmetal gray, almost black, but I like it. I'm going to say, since we really don't have anything to compare this to, that Slitherfang, honestly, is a, we might as well call it a 10. Now, to be fair, while I say we have nothing really to draw from or compare to, apparently it is based on like some concept art for like the Autobot Master Warrior from the 87 Headmasters line. I don't know. Like it's very out there sort of <laughs> like influence. Apparently IDW's Toxin like shares the same origins. I don't know. Who knew? So if we're saying a 10 for his coloration, what about his articulation? He's a snake. So how well does he do with being a snake? Well, the head can kind of go, I guess, up and down. It doesn't go left or right, but his body can move left and right. Um, he can, you know, he could get all the way down and slither along quite snakily. He can move right back. This piece here is the handle, but it's also like his tail piece. It can move up and down. I like that there are molded in treads here. They're not picked out in paint, but I like that there's molded in treads. So like that's how he could move along where he's mechanical. I think that that's kind of cool. So honestly, like for being a snake, the articulation, I'm, I, 10, I guess. You know, I, well, actually I'll say nine. It'd be nice if the head itself could move a little more, but the body does. No, and you know what? No, I'm gonna be nice. I'm gonna stick with 10. I'm gonna say 10. So we have a 10, we have a 10. What about the transformation? Well, he turns into a plank, so I mean, it is what it is. Apparently this was designed by John Warden himself, and I'm always hard on Warden for being a corporate chill and stuff, but like, I give credit where credit is due. He done a fine job. Basically, you bring up the chest piece and flatten it out. The head goes flattened in there. The treads that were down here go flipped up, and there's uh, two rectangular slots here. They go into two rectangular holes up here. If you have it facing the right way, which you should, you push in the peg and that's it. He's a, he's a plank. He has the connector piece here and here so he can connect and extend like Earthrise bases and stuff. He can connect to Omega Supreme and Ironworks and Grease Pit and all those guys. I don't know if there's any Quintesson bases he can connect to. He could connect to another Slitherfang, I guess. Uh, the transformation is fine. It is what it is, but I will say it's a 10 for being a floor plank. Overall, he's a 10. Nice job, Warden. Nice job indeed. And here we are once again. I'm blown away. I think this is great. It's As a snake, it's quite, quite versatile and has a lot of articulation. Yes, the head itself doesn't move, but where the body can rotate and bend up and down, like... It can, it can do a lot of snaky things. Uh, even when it like rotates around, like it can slither along and stuff like, I, I get it. And I love that there are like molded in treads here because he's a robot. Maybe he, you know, rumbles along the ground, so to speak. The translucent, I don't mind. A lot of people don't like translucent, but this translucent purple, I think fits the guy. The transformation is simple. He's a fine plank when he's a plank. There is, I didn't show it, and I suppose I should have, there's one little battle nub back here where you could put the blast effect on. Like I said, the blast effect, rather than something being fired, it's more of a, something being struck, like this is, this is laser fire landing on a platform, you know? I'm glad to have that, because we don't have many of them, and they're very useful for display, for animation, for all that stuff. Uh, a lot of times, man, over the past few years, I've been kind of hard on John Warden, but I'm going to give the dude credit where credit is due. He done a fantastic job with a weird alt mode and gave us a new and dynamic character that I'm 100% behind. Let me know what you think about Slither Fang. Did you like him? I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. Hit the subscribe button. Stick around, baby. Have some fun with us here on the channel. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, you can always hit the join button right here on YouTube. Don't forget somehow, some Way each and every single day, man. You do make a difference, and I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.